Welcome to episode number 245, where my client Monica from Tasmania shares her journey with Ayurveda. She talks about how it was really important to tailor the digestive reset cleanse to her busy career as an engineer and a yoga teacher. She talks about the lessons she's learned in self-compassion and managing her vata during her workday. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being, preventing disease in the body and mind so that you can thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, which is the ancient healing tradition from India. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. And if you like the content, please be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so the new episodes will automatically download for you. Also, you may want to check out my private elements community, which is away from social media. It's a safe space for like-minded people to come together, to connect, to share, to support each other, and to continue the conversation from the podcast episodes. Check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just click on the community tab and I hope to connect with you there. Thanks for listening and now here is a new episode. This episode is sponsored by Kerala Ayurveda. If you're an Ayurvedic professional and want to improve your skills to better support your clients' Ayurveda journeys, check out Kerala Ayurveda Academy's continuing ed programs. Topics include formulation making, assessment and pulse diagnosis, Vedic formulations, clinical applications, case discussions, and Ashtanga Hridayam. Workshop intensives are held in person and via live streaming. Students from all schools are welcome. To learn more and save 10% on an upcoming program, visit keralaayurveda.us slash courses and use the code ELEMENTS. Hello and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today I'd like to introduce you to somebody I've been working with over the past couple of months and very happy that she has come on the podcast today to share her journey with Ayurveda. I know I get a lot of requests for these types of episodes and it's always wonderful when someone is willing to be open and come on and share their story. And so I introduce you to Monica. Monica, welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you for interviewing me. Oh, well, it's more chit chat, right? <laughs> true, true. true. Chit chat. So, Monica, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this today. And can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Um, okay. I'm a 32 year old um, woman living in Australia, in Tasmania. So, the very bottom of the world. Um, I am a yoga teacher, um, also a bit of a fitness teacher as well for other things as well as being an engineer. So an interesting mix of Uh things together there. Good combo. It's a good balance. (laughs) Makes things, um, yeah, it makes both worlds much more balanced, having the direct opposite on the other side. (laughs) Right, exactly. I think that's always good. So, Monica, tell me, how did you get introduced to Ayurveda? Um, So I was interested in yoga from quite a young age. Um, So from my sort of mid-teens, we got introduced to um, sort of Hindi philosophy and my love of yoga and all things along those lines kind of blossomed from there. And so over um, the decades that went on from there, I guess, um, I've just slowly learned more and more about like the different limbs of yoga and what the different parts of it are. And one of those things was stumbling across the philosophies of Ayurveda. Um, so I guess I've always been interested in how we can use these sort of Eastern type medicines to supplement Western lifestyles, especially with our sort of really busy schedules. Um, so I've always had a fair interest in it, but it wasn't until I did my yoga teacher training about four years ago now. Um, and we did a unit specific look on Ayurveda that I was like, yes, this, this stuff could help me out. And so it's sort of, I've gradually learned and adapted from there. 
Wonderful. Great. And that's lovely. I didn't realize you were introduced to yoga at such a young age and it's been there throughout your life. That's fantastic. It's right. it's really been it's really been a pillar of like it's definitely yeah, as a kid I was never very athletic, whereas right. yoga was just always this thing for me that was how I connected with my body. And so oh, yeah. That's fantastic. It's so great to have that just as part of your lifestyle from a young age. It's a really big pillar. Yeah, good. That's great to hear. And so you contacted me in May of this year. And tell me why you got in touch. What were your reasons for getting in touch in May? Um, Okay. Well, I guess throughout the last few years, as probably everybody has felt over the last few years, is the whole changing world with COVID and um, I went through some pretty grim situations at work that really affected my mental health and just how I sort of perceived my body. Um, And so over the last probably year or so, I've gone through a really deep journey into just trying to figure out a little bit more about me, um, about how I work, so sort of dappling in a few things. And I was um, having a chat with one of my good friends um, who has really found a passion for Ayurveda and for um, like the benefits of yoga. And we were just talking about how much she had got out of this process. And it just, it's something just clicked in my mind that I needed to contact you because this was something that I needed to do. So I was at that sort of pivotal point that I really needed to change something. And so, yeah, I think, just that conversation, something clicked. And when you know, you just know. Right. And this is someone I had worked with previously as well, who was a friend of yours as well. So that, that's yeah. great. And, and that's what, what's lovely from people speaking about how much it helped them and then sharing that with others, you know, and saying, hey, maybe this could be right for you too. Because, yeah, I remember when we spoke, there was a lot of digestive issues. And like I said, we've gone through those, you know, a couple of years of, of COVID and there was a lot of stress from work. There was a lot of pressure there. And also there was a lot of um, like this feeling of just overwhelm and lack of motivation as well, right? It was really feeling like quite this inertia. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I, I made big leaps from COVID times, but I just didn't feel like I was going forwards anymore. And something something had to give. Mm-hmm. And I know when when we did originally the consult, the 90-minute consult, and then I did recommend the cleanse for you, um, I thought it would be really beneficial. And it was really important that we tailor it to you because there was this work overwhelm and just this, you know, a lot of stress there that I wanted to make sure that this was a very smooth transition into the cleanse for you and that it didn't overwhelm you, you know, further or cause any stress. And that's very important for every client. But I know in particular for you, it was because you're just so busy at the time. Yeah, definitely. And and that's one of the things that have really, really gravitated me towards your cleanse and your programs and has definitely, definitely proven that that gravitation was there for a reason is it's been so accessible to put into a really, really busy lifestyle. Right. So I work long hours and I have a second job as the as a yoga teacher. And so uh-huh. your methods and um processes are just suited around me and make it accessible. Right, right. Yeah, we really tailored it to your lifestyle. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience on the cleanse, what that was like for you? Um, you know, preparing your meals and, and and what it felt like going through the cleanse and how it fitted in, like you said, with work and with your busy lifestyle. Um, yeah, I, I found the batch cooking was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially the preparation week, I think was really important because, again, other sort of cleanses I've looked at, they throw you into it without necessarily highlighting the importance of it whereas for us you made the preparation week like you don't have to give up coffee on day one but just ease it out of your lifestyle make sure that when you go into your cleanse week you're not going to have horrendous headaches or um which made it a lot more accessible around social events as well right because you weren't having to change everything 
Um, yeah, and, and the same thing during the cleanse is I felt like I could still go out and do things with friends, but I also knew that in the background there was this thing that I was doing for myself that was really important and I could just have it there and I could eat my lunch with my friends and I'd just have my other food. And, um, yeah, again, if you're focused on it's there to rejuvenate and not make you hungry meant that you did focus on nourishing yourself, not starving yourself. Right, exactly. Yeah. And in fact, it's very important not to go hungry for a long time. Um, And I know um, when we spoke originally that you had this very short hunger window and a lot of times you would work through because you were so stressed in work. And then it would get to the point where you were just feeling really lightheaded and feeling feeling really off and going, what's wrong? And then I need to eat. So you mentioned this earlier that that, um, when we spoke before the recording that the fact now that you're in a routine of eating and the good fats made a huge difference, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely find now that I'm when I wake, I'm hungry rather right. than just being like, I need to get on with the day. And at midday, I'm just like, yep, it's time for me to walk outside the office and I need to eat. Otherwise, I'm not going to be productive for the afternoon. And that's that's been a really big shift because it means even people around me have made comment that I'm much more attentive and I'm much more focused um, than I was simply because they just, they're not seeing me vague out anymore. Right. Right. And and so that priority on, on going to lunch rather than I'm now vague two hours later has been really important. Yeah. And when you experience that vagueness, the, the energy crash, that it would take you so much longer to recover from that. Right. Because you're already in depletion. Um, when you get to that stage. And I love that you're taking it outside, music to my ears, that you're not staying in that work environment, make sure you're getting outside to eat lunch. And I know in particular, even during the cleanse, I think you, you emailed me or I was checking in with you and you said that, you know, the good fats and the lack of caffeine is like, oh my goodness, what a difference. Very, very much so. Definitely the caffeine thing is being a, like a corporate kind of professional woman is, there's a very much a idea of you must drink coffee all the time without really thinking about what it does to your body. And anybody who's said to me in the past, oh, I don't drink coffee, I've been like, how can you not drink coffee? And the awareness that it's now given me of I shouldn't drink coffee either is pretty massive. That's- yeah. And you did mention that you had, I think post cleanse, you had some ca- caffeine and your body. What was the reaction? Um. Yeah, shaking, sweating, so many thoughts that the world was ending. I'm um, just like overwhelming anxiety. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, the minute that I felt it, there were a couple of people around me and they're just, I was sitting there with my head in my hands and they were like, Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, but I know what's happening right now. Yeah. Just let me alone. Right. And so, yeah, I've been dealing with that for years and years and years without realizing what the trigger was. Right. And it's amazing. And that's why I love for people to experience through the cleanse, post cleanse, their body imbalance, and then try those foods or drinks that you're concerned about. You think maybe aggravating and feel it yourself in your body. What's it, what it's doing to you, because that's the best catalyst for change, right? When you feel mm-hmm. those negative effects in your body and mind. Yeah, definitely. hundred percent. Yeah. And I know the sleep was a concern too, of course, with the stress and possibly side effect of the caffeine too, that there was a taking a long time to go to sleep and just not getting good rest. And I know you notice a shift mm-hmm. in that as well. Yeah, very much so. Um, just being able to have a deeper night's sleep and um, definitely my dreams, which is quite interesting is um, before I was having a lot of nightmares, whereas now they're not scary wow. anymore that's great which is amazing because nobody wants to go to sleep and be scared no exactly because there is there's then the tension or almost like a fear before you go to bed you're like oh my god what am I gonna have to deal with tonight because your body's reacting to that fear in your sleep yeah definitely right. it's quite um, interesting 
Yeah, it is. Absolutely. I'm going to interrupt here just for a moment, because if you're listening to Monica's story and you're intrigued and interested by the Ayurvedic cleansing experience, I just want to let you know that I have an upcoming group, Discount to Cleanse, starting September 2nd, 2022. We're doing the cleanse then because we're going from the transition from one season to the next. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, because I will tailor the cleanse, the mindfulness practices, the recipes and anything else to your needs and your lifestyle. So check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and go to the events tab for the group Discount to Cleanse starting September 2nd. If that date doesn't work for you, you can choose a private cleanse. It's the same program and you just get to choose your own dates and you'll find the private cleanse under the programs tab. So check that out. This episode is also sponsored by Mount Madonna Institute. Study Ayurveda and Ayurvedic yoga therapy on a mountaintop campus overlooking Monterey Bay on the central coast of California. A nurturing learning environment in nature surrounded by redwoods and a like-minded community of peers. Visit mountmadonnainstitute.org to discover all the details on these programs and receive $100 off tuition when you register before December 31st, 2022 using the discount code ELEMENTS22. You'll find all the info and links in the show notes. You mentioned as well during the cleanse that, you know, it really was like an eye-opening experience for you and you felt like you're really learning about yourself, but also that it gave you lots of confidence and you feel more capable to deal with those bumps in the road in regards like stress and work and so on. Yeah, I think it gave me it gave me a much better ability to treat myself with kindness. Mm. So rather than being you have to persevere and push through, being able to actually step back and go, well, is this the best thing for me? Is this going to aggravate? Is this going to aggravate me? Is this going to end up negatively? So what do I do need to do to protect myself? Right, right. And exactly. from that. Yeah, exactly. And to have these habits in place so that it doesn't get to that point where you're aggravated and dealing with those consequences. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. And I know you mentioned as well during the cleanse that, you know, again, we said that you would have a short hunger window. You'd often work through it, but it's like, I have to get this done. And you would get fidgety your vata would start getting a little bit antsy in work and you'll be like, no, I have to sit here and I have to just plow through this. And, you know, even with the feelings of anxiousness in the body, you would do that. But now you know how to manage that, right? Yeah, definitely. And I definitely feel a lot less guilty about during my work day. I I do get up and make myself a fair few cups of tea or go for a walk around the office. And I'm just I've come to the realization that I that's something I need to do to keep myself stimulated and focused. And somebody else can sit there for three hours at a time, and it doesn't mean that they're more productive. Exactly. It's just that's what suits them. It doesn't suit me. Exactly. And you just have different needs and you know how to manage your body. And you talked about in work how they're using your unique skill set in that Vata loves to hop into different projects and be able to quickly adapt to new situations, which is a real skill of Vata and often works well when things are changing. And you're mentioning that your work has recognized that and that's your skill set. So they'll often put you into like shifting situations because they know you can manage it. But at the same time, you need to make sure that you have these non-negotiables in place. You have this skill set, but you need to say, hey, okay, I can be of, you know, real help here, but these are not my non-negotiables. And also giving you confidence in, you know, deliberating with them on that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And being able to be much more firm about the fact that these are important and will make me the best I can be for you. If you honor the fact <laughs> I'm raising that- my hands here. I love that. It's, <laughs> and it's like, it's like having the confidence to go, you know, this is who I am. And these are the conditions I need in order to perform at my optimal best. And 
I'm not asking for anything crazy. It's just, I need you to know and to like, if all employers understood how each person thrived, just give them that. And you'll have the best performing employees with less sickness, less stress. And uh, that's what we really need to understand. Not everybody is going to work in the same environment and need, have the same needs. Everyone's very unique. Yeah, exactly. And they're everybody special for that reason. And we need exactly. to appreciate that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that, that you're, yeah, that you're so aware of this now and confident in having those conversations that, yeah, I have my skill sets and they are of benefit to you, but I need to have, make sure I have a, a balanced foundation first. And also you mentioned that you're, your coworkers are taking notes and that you're, you're yes. bringing in. <laughs> Tell us about that. I love that. They're watching what's happening. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just really interesting. Like a lot of them have just sort of, they've commented a few times and they're like, oh, why, why have you got that um, flask with you? I'm just like, well, this is my CCFT. Um, it's very good for digestion or, oh, we're having a meeting soon. Do you want to help me out with some stretches that we can do beforehand, help loosen up our bodies? I'm like, yeah, definitely. Like, this is something I'm good at and something that will benefit you. So, oh my God, yeah, that's really nice. amazing. That's great. And you're doing your, your, but you said your mindfulness practices, particularly the Nadi, the Nadi Shodhana or the breath practices have been very helpful. And that you're also um, have more awareness about when that vata is starting to rise and, and watching it and knowing, oh, I need to take a break, do a walk, get a cuppa, go outside or do some mindfulness practices. Yeah, very much so. That's fantastic. So. You talked about how people had commented on your skin and just your your demeanor also post cleanse. Yeah, definitely. It's been that's been probably it's been really lovely because obviously you feel all these changes in your body and in your mind and you're feeling good. But when somebody is like, "Oh, you your skin is glowing at the moment," you're like, "Well, yeah, okay." Other people are seeing this, and this is really great. Uh, my my mum specifically was the one who commented on my skin and that coming from my mum is like, yep, I'm on the right winning path here. <laughs> ah, that's great. It's lovely to get that feedback, isn't it? It just, it's so positive. Oh. Yeah, definitely. So Monica, how do you feel then going through this cleanse has shifted things for you? What do you think you got from going through this journey, learning about Ayurveda, going through the cleanse and how has it changed the way you're, you're living your life, you're working? We've already touched on some things there. Um. I think I think for me the main thing, and as we were talking about previously, as someone who has a very high um, vata constitution, is routine is important to me. So it's definitely highlighted that even if I have three or four things that I do in my day, they're the things that are non-negotiables that I do, and that helps me, especially in the morning, balance myself out. Um, and as I think another really big one is understanding that because I have a split constitution between Vata and Pitta, um, how important it is to honour both of those at different times during the year, Um, especially in somewhere like Tassie, that we don't have much of a summer, but we do still have a bit of that. And our winters are very kind of cold, miserable winters. Not snowy, but still miserable. (laughs) Um, So it's important to honour that. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. And it really is just all about the awareness and being able to uh, be more in tune with your body and mind and see what it's telling you and see the shifts that it's going through and just acknowledging it and giving it what it needs um, and so that it can perform for you. Mm. Yeah, 100 percent. It's really key. That's so great. And so is there any Ayurvedic uh, tip or advice that you would give to people out there from your own unique experience? Is there anything that you would share? And as a, you know, obviously you're a yoga teacher, you the sister science of Ayurveda. So you've been in this world of yoga and Ayurveda for a long time. What would be something that you would like to share with people? Um. I, I jotted down three sort of things that mm-hmm. are, I guess, are my biggest takeaways. Um, the first one is just listening to your body and the signals that it's giving you and going through this process and even just reflecting on my whole journey in yoga. is It's so important just to listen 
to what's going on inside of you because that's going to give you the best guide for what you need to do. Um, And my second one was stress and not allowing yourself proper rest, especially as a Vata and Pitta constitution person, um, will have a massive effect on the body. And so you need to be aware that powering on is not going to help you out in the long term. Right, exactly. Um, and the third one is kind of a little bit funny, but drinking warm water, drinking warm water makes you feel better. Yes, <laughs> um, it does. <laughs> especially, especially in winter in Tassie, it's, it's cold, and so yeah, that's a really simple shift that I've made. But I feel much better because of it, and my digest, like my digestion's better for it, and. Yeah. 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 Simple, you were having, but... yeah, you were having a lot of digestive discomfort. So that little shift really helped. Um, but thank you. Thank you for sharing those. And I think this is what I love to see. I love doing, you know, hearing in my follow-ups is your understanding your unique constitution, your understanding your needs, your skills, you have much more awareness and that you feel confident now in taking charge of your health going forward. And really, it's it really is like the start of the journey because you'll continue to learn in each season as we go through the changes of the season. But that it's um that is this respect for the body and also this curiosity about what's happening and really just tuning in. So it's just like another mm. layer to all your yoga studies and now Ayurveda. And mm. it's just right, even more of a holistic practice now. Yeah, very much so. Yes, and and for me personally, yoga has always been more than just more than just your body. Like that's what I try and tell people when I talk about it. But definitely, this has just added another layer on top of that understanding, which is really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, Monica, thank you so much for coming on here today and sharing this journey with us. I think it's so helpful for other listeners to hear the journey with Ayurveda and to hear the benefits it can have. Um, And also it's just interesting to hear people's real life stories. So thank you. Definitely. I just want to also acknowledge that you really put such a great effort into this and it's due to all your efforts that you're reaping all these benefits right now. So well done. Thank you for guiding me through it. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Okay, Monica, take good care of yourself. Thanks again. And we'll chat soon. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Monica. And if you think that this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them so we can spread this wisdom. If you're interested in undertaking a digestive reset cleanse, also check out the links in the show notes. Again, I have my group discounted digestive reset cleanse starting September 2nd. And you can also avail of a private cleanse and choose your own dates and you'll find those links in the show notes. If you haven't already followed or subscribed to the podcast, please do so, so the new episodes will automatically download for you. And if you would like to rate and review the podcast, I would really appreciate that. You can also follow me on social media, on Instagram and Facebook under Elements Healing and Wellbeing. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, take good care of yourself, be well, and bye for now. Slong a fall.